How big is the file containing all of the service configurations for dependency injection in your application? If it's growing more with every new service that you introduce, you're going to have trouble maintaining that over time. I'm going to show you two ways to solve that problem and then you can decide which one you want to use in your own application. I'm inside of program.cs of a .NET 7 web API and you can see I have a lot of code for configuring services inside of it. We are configuring Redis, then adding some of our own services. We are adding Mediator, the database context, some background jobs. We're also adding authentication and authorization services. And you can see we have close to 100 lines of code for configuring our services. If we continue to use this approach, our program.cs file is going to grow out of control and then maintainability is going to become a real concern for our application. I'm going to show you one way to solve this using extension methods on the iService collection interface and this is probably an approach that you're already familiar with because this is what is used inside of the framework by Microsoft. I'm going to add a new folder where I'm going to place all of the service configurations. I'm going to name this folder configuration and let's add a static class inside that's going to hold our extension methods. Let's call our class dependency injection and add it to our project and let's define an extension method that's going to hold our service configuration code. The method is going to be public and static. It's going to return an i service collection instance. This is so that I can chain multiple calls to configure services using the builder syntax. And let's call this first method add caching because I'm going to configure services for caching inside of this method. So all that we have to do now is go back to program.cs and pull out the logic that is configuring Redis over here. I'm going to move it out of here and move it inside of the add caching method. Now I need to replace builder.services with just services. And I have an issue here where I have a dependency on the I configuration to get the connection string. The simplest way to solve this would be just to expose the I configuration as an additional argument to this method. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's add the I configuration argument and now I can use it here to get the connection string for Redis. At the end of the method, I'm just going to return a service collection instance and I want to go back to program.cs and take out one other service, which is the memory cache here. I'm also going to place it inside of the add caching method. Instead of builder services, we just need services. And this is looking all right. And now since I removed this code from the program.cs, I need to remember to go here and call the new method that I defined. So builder services, and we call the add caching method that we just defined. It requires us to specify the I configuration instance. So I'm going to pass that in also. And this is how you can move your logic for configuring services outside of the program.cs file. Let's add another method that's going to wrap this logic for adding the infrastructure services. Let's add a new method here to wrap that code that we just replaced. I'm going to call this method add infrastructure. So let me just create it, add infrastructure. It needs an I service collection to be an extension method. And let's paste in the code. And I need to replace builder services with just services. And then I return the services instance. So now I can go back to program.cs and let's, for example, chain a call right here to add caching. We need to call add infrastructure. Now I want to take all of this logic right here for configuring mediator and the validators. And these are application level concerns. So I'm going to add a new method that I'm going to call add application similar to add infrastructure. So let's go ahead and do that. So public static iService collection add application. I need to define service collection and paste the code that we just removed. And instead of builder services, we just need to use services from the add application method. Let me fix this in two more places. All right, we need to import the methods that we're using from other libraries and we return the services instance. Now I go back to program.cs and here we chain a call to add application. Let's take this logic for configuring the database context and perhaps we can move it inside of the add infrastructure method. 
if you feel like it doesn't really fit there, you can always move it to a separate method that you can create. But for simplicity, I'm just going to place it here. So replace the builder services with services coming from our extension method. You can see that we are missing the I configuration instance here so that we are able to fetch the connection string. So I'm going to fix that by adding an argument for the I configuration instance. So let's add that as the argument. Now that we have our configuration instance, we can use it here to get the connection string. And since I'm using the connection string just so that I can pass it to the use SQL server method, I'm going to get rid of the variable for the connection string and pass the configuration value directly. Let's go back to program.cs. You can see that the add infrastructure method is red because we need to pass it an instance of I configuration so that it can fetch the connection string for EF core. So what do we have left here? You can see that here we have some code for configuring our background service. So I'm going to take all of that and place it in a separate method here that I'm going to define now. So let's add a new method, which I will call add background jobs. So I'm going to define it with public static I service collection, add background jobs, and it needs to be an extension method. And let's paste in the code that we took from the program.cs file. So here, instead of builder services, we just need to use services and here also. And at the end, we just return the services instance to complete our extension method. And now I can go back to program.cs and chain a call to add background jobs. You can see that we have two distinct parts of configuration left. This one is for our controllers and Swagger. And this one here is for the authentication and authorization services. So I'm going to add two more extension methods to wrap all of these methods. So I'm going to replace this first for configuring the controllers. And let's add a new extension method here. I'm going to call this extension method add presentation. So let's define it. So add presentation here and paste in the code that we just took from program.cs replace builder.services with just services and we return the services instance at the end of the method and we go back to program.cs and let's say right after calling add background jobs i can call add presentation what we have remaining is the authentication and authorization services so let's take out all of those go back to the dependency injection class and let's add a new extension method this one I'm going to call add authentication and authorization. So public static I service collection, add authentication and authorization. And let's make it an extension method. So this I service collection services, and we paste in the code that we took out from program.cs. We replace builder services with just services. So replace all of those. I'm going to speed this up a little. All right, and let's return the services instance at the end of the method. All right, so now I just need to use this method inside of program.cs. So right here after add presentation, I'm going to call add authentication and authorization. You can see our program.cs is much simpler now and our logic for configuring the services is now just a few method calls and all of our code for configuring the services with dependency injection is nicely encapsulated inside of these extension methods. This is the approach that Microsoft uses inside of the framework itself. And it's also the approach that you're going to use if you're building any kind of library for others to consume. I want to highlight what I think is a potential issue with this approach. And even though it's a minor issue, I think it's worth talking about. As your project grows, you're going to end up adding more and more extension methods to encapsulate all of the services that you configure inside of your application. So that's one thing. And the other thing is you have to remember to call that extension method in program.cs, otherwise your services will not get configured properly. So I want to show you a different approach for how you can define your service configuration and have it applied automatically. I'm going to start out by adding an interface to the configuration folder and I'm going to call it iServiceInstaller. So I'm going to add that interface now. Inside of this interface, I'm going to define just one method. It's going to be void. I'm going to call it install. It needs to have two arguments. The first argument is going to be the service collection. And the second argument is going to be an instance of iConfiguration. So let's go ahead and add that. 
And now I'm going to use this interface to define the service installers that I need in my application. The approach I'm going to take is I'm going to add a service installer for each of the methods that we have inside of this dependency injection class. So the first one is going to be the caching service installer. As I said, we need to implement the iService installer interface. So let's go ahead and do that. And if I go back to the dependency injection class, I can just take the code from here and paste it inside of my service installer. Now let's go ahead and add all of the other service installers. So the next one is going to be the infrastructure service installer. Let's quickly add that class. So infrastructure service installer. We implement the iService installer interface and we paste the logic from the dependency injection class. So that would be all of this. And we move it here. We need to import the USQL server from any framework and we are done. Now we need to add the application service installer. So let's go ahead and do that. So application service installer. We implement the iService installer interface and we just copy the code from the add application method. So all of this and we paste it here to complete our implementation. Now we have the background job service installer. So let's go ahead and add that background jobs service installer. We implement again the iService installer interface and we take the logic from the add background jobs method and we paste it inside of our service installer. All right, well, that's looking good. And I think we have one or two more methods. So the next one would be the presentation service installer. Let's go ahead and add that. So presentation service installer, implement the iService installer interface, and we take the code from over here and move it to our presentation service installer. And the only one that's left is the authentication and authorization. You can make this two service installers if you want, one for authentication and another for authorization, but I'm going to make it one just to make it simple. So authentication and authorization service installer. Again, we implement the iService installer interface and we take the code from the dependency injection class and paste it into the implementation of our authentication and authorization service installer. So this takes care of implementing our service installers. And now all we need to do is take all of the implementations of that interface, instantiate them and call the install method. The simplest way to do that is going to be using reflection. I'm going to add a new method to the dependency injection class that is going to apply our service installers. I'm going to give it the name of install services and it has to be an extension method on the iService collection class. And additionally, I'm going to give it an argument for the iConfiguration interface. So let's go ahead and do that. What we have to do in here is scan the current assembly and we can even pass in the assembly as an argument. I'm going to actually do that. So I'm going to add an assembly here as an argument. And what you can actually do to make this even more flexible is to make this an array of assemblies and place the params keyword in front so that you can pass in assemblies one by one. I'm going to call this argument assemblies. So what I'm going to do now is iterate over the assemblies using link. I'm going to find the types that implement the iService installer interface and I'm going to instantiate them. And then we're going to call the install method on the instances of the service installer. So I'm going to say assemblies, select many, and I'm going to take from each assembly all of their defined types. Now I want to filter the types for the ones that are implementing the iService installer interface. I'm going to define a local function to check if a given type is assignable to a generic type that I specify as the argument. And I'm going to use this as the argument for the where method. So I'm going to say is assignable to type and I'm going to specify iService installer as the generic argument here. And now that we have filtered out all of the types and we have the ones that are assignable to iService installer, we can instantiate them. All of the classes implementing the iService installer just have a default constructor. So I'm going to call select and I'm going to pass in activator and call the create instance method. And this is going to instantiate my service installers. But if I take a look at the result, it's returning an i enumerable of object. 
So what I can do is cast that to the iService installer interface. Now that we have a collection of service installers, let's go ahead and introduce a variable that's going to hold our service installers. And all that's left for us to do is iterate over the service installer instances. And for each of them, we just call the install method. So I'm going to say service installers for each. And then for each service installer, we just call the install method. We're going to pass in the iService collection and the iConfiguration instances. And this takes care of installing all of the services that we have placed inside of our service installers. And I'm just going to return a services instance to satisfy my method definition. And now we can go back to program.cs. We can get rid of all of this code here that we previously added for configuring our services. And I just need to call install services and pass it an instance of iConfiguration. And we also need to specify which assembly we want to scan for the iService installer implementations. The simplest way to do that, since all of these services are defined in one assembly, is I'm going to say type of iService installer and take the assembly from there. So this is going to call our extension method, instantiate all of the service installers and configure our services with dependency injection. Don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And until next time, stay awesome.